you do if you learn today that because of circumstances beyond your control, you will have to grow nearly all your own food in the next five, ten, or twenty years, or do without? How would you begin? Having an adequate and reliable food supply is a basic human need. Teaching people to meet that need while conserving the Earth's limited resources is the mission of ecology action. As the seriousness of the world agricultural situation becomes more apparent, there is an increasing interest in developing sustainable food systems. Sustainability means living in such a way that there are enough resources to live well in an alive, diverse, thriving environment indefinitely. Using resources more efficiently, doing more with less, allows us to use personal energy more effectively. The field of electronics was miniaturized on this basis, and in fact, the entire world is on the verge of a major discovery that there are great economies of small scale, such as in ecology actions, miniaturization of agriculture. The miniaturization of agriculture is not new, however. Small scale sustainable agriculture has supported such widely dispersed civilizations as the Chinese 4,000 years ago, and the Peruvians, the Mayans, and the Greeks in the last 1,000 to 3,000 years. The sophisticated low technology and energy efficient approaches involved in this kind of food raising based on centuries of successful traditions make fully sustainable agricultural practices adaptable nearly everywhere on earth. This agriculture is designed to be used on a human scale, one that a person can really care for. The farmer or gardener becomes important in the process, restoring a need for skill, involvement, and pride in the growing of our food. Rather than trying to escape from physical labor, we can enjoy the efficient use of the very same muscles involved in maintaining a healthy human life. Properly performed, physical work is strengthening and the rewards immense. Ecology Action is entering its 27th year of research and development for biointensive sustainable mini farming, a small scale agricultural system which produces high yields with open pollinated seeds while using a fraction of the water purchased organic fertilizer, and energy per pound of food produced when compared with commercial agriculture. This approach can also maintain and improve soil fertility while enabling more land to be left in a natural state, so important plant and animal genetic diversity is preserved. The system is affordable for almost everyone 
and uses locally available resources. Scarcity can be changed into abundance when sustainable resource conserving agricultural practices are used. For example, agriculture accounts for 80% of all the water used by people on this planet and one third of the world's countries are in a situation of water scarcity relative to their populations. Furthermore, the agricultural practices being used by these countries do not generally conserve water within the soil. The result is that we are depleting our available freshwater base. Biointensive practices use one-third to one-eighth the water per pound of food produced as compared with conventional farming practices. This means that the amount of clean water available for farming, which is currently becoming insufficient with conventional food growing methods, can be adequate when biointensive practices are used. Sustainability involves a dynamic, interdependent relationship between each of us and the resources that maintain our lives. A focus on the production of calories for the gardener and farmer and carbon and nutrients for the soil ensures that all will be adequately fed and that farm productivity will be sustainable. Because of its higher productivity, biointensive practices could allow one half to three quarters of the world to be left in wildland for the preservation of plant, animal, and microbial diversity. Biointensive practices, if generally adopted, could make it possible to grow food for all the people in the United States, just the area now used for lawns. This means agriculturally self-sufficient cities with edible yards and food producing green belts could thrive without clearing or cultivating any additional land. Ecology Action has dedicated over a quarter century to rediscovering the scientific principles that underlie the ancient traditional systems of agriculture. The results of this research have been shared worldwide through classes, training programs, and scores of publications in many languages, including six how-to books, 30 booklets, and over 50 information sheets. Biointensive practices imitate and maximize the effects of nature's own processes, especially those that occur at the interface of soil, water, and sunlight, where growth is most prolific. This makes it possible to grow food using 99% less energy in all forms, human and mechanical, 66 to 88 percent less water and 50 to 100 percent less fertilizer compared to commercial agriculture. Biointensive also produces two to six times more food per unit area while continually improving the soil. The five basic elements of the biointensive system can be summarized as follows. One, double digging growing beds loosens the soil to a depth of 24 inches, facilitates root growth, aerates and improves water retention. Two, soil health and vigor are maintained through application of natural nutrients in the form of humus derived from carbonaceous compost crops grown specifically to feed the soil on 60% of the area under cultivation. The soil must be fed first. To feed people well, approximately 30% of the growing area must also be planted in crops such as potatoes, sweet potatoes, and garlic which produce large amounts of calories in a very small area. Three, close seedling spacing is used to protect the soil microorganisms, reduce water loss, and maximize yields using open pollinated seeds that also preserve genetic diversity in locally adapted crops. Four, companion planting of vegetables and flowers that grow well together facilitates the optimal use of nutrients, light, and water and encourages beneficial insects and creates vibrant mini ecosystems within the garden. Five, a complete systems approach and proper use of all interrelated parts must be practiced to achieve sustainability because the power of the whole system is far greater than the simple sum of the parts. A partial application of methods and techniques will not succeed and can actually deplete soil fertility. Thousands of individuals and organizations in 110 countries have already learned the biointensive method. Through these international projects, teachers are trained who in turn train other teachers who show the people of their countries these simple, sustainable practices. By concentrating on training effective teachers, biointensive practices can more quickly become available at the grassroots level throughout the world. Some of the many successful examples of biointensive teachers include Fernando Pia, a 1993 and 1994 Ecology Action Workshop participant from Patagonia. 
He founded the Center for Research and Training in Sustainable Agriculture in Argentina, where over 150 sample crops have already been adapted to the mountainous Andean valleys. In 1993, Susan Wakesa lost her 10-acre family farm in Kenya in East Africa as a result of ethnic clashes. In 1995, she was able to begin rebuilding a life for her family on one-third of an acre with help and instruction from Eric Kisiangani, a 1990 ecology action teacher trainee who initiated the Rural Technology Center at Mabusi. Gaspar Mayagortia, another participant in an Ecology Action 1994 six-week workshop, has initiated training of 2,000 drought-besieged Tarahumar Indians in Chihuahua, Mexico. Also in Mexico, Padre Julio de la Garza of Nuevo León, a 1996 five-day workshop participant, established a secondary-level biointensive technical school in November 1996 to teach 5,000 campesinos in his arid region self-help food raising practices. Closer to home, Carol and Steve Moore at Wilson College in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, continued to manage a successful biointensive community supported agriculture market farm, or CSA, that is also a demonstration site for college students. Learning biointensive techniques enables farmers everywhere to acquire key skills and understand the conceptual tools needed to grow large quantities of healthy food in a way that is truly sustainable. At the same time, they can consciously maintain and even improve the fertility of their soil. One result may be that we grow healthy people who understand that we must grow healthy soil, not just crops, in order to have a healthy life. Voltaire and Candide suggest that if each of us tends our own garden, the entire world will be transformed, and in the process, our work and life may be filled with meaning. If we do so, our harvest and the health of the planet will be abundant beyond our greatest expectations.